Welcome to the AWAS demo. I'm Lalita Nagarajan from the AWAS team and I'm happy to take you through a demo of AWAS. First, let me thank you for your time for attending this. Um, so let's get started. So I'm going to be talking to you about AWAS, which is basically a communication app for children with complex communication needs. Um, so what are the kind of communication challenges that the child faces? So what are the kinds of uh, challenges? So one is the child can be non-verbal, uh, he can be partially verbal or with unclear speech or even a single word communicator. And uh, these are children with autism, Down syndrome, cerebral palsy, mental retardation, Angelman syndrome and etc. So AWAS can be an app that can be useful for all of these children. So what is the importance of communication? And we know that once the child has the ability to communicate, it vastly improves uh, behavior issues. So in terms of tantrums, um, because simply because of their inability to communicate. Uh, it also improves attention span. It certainly in improves the self-confidence and self-esteem of the child. Social interactions can be far better and results in improved relationships. Uh, also class participation and academic progress can be seen and above all it leads to independence of the child. So how does a child who is unable to communicate start communicating? Uh, one of the main things is the alternative, augmentative and alternative communication which is basically alternative modes of communication other than natural speech. So this could be in the form of sign language, gestures, facial expressions, etc. In addition, we also have AAC uh, software, which is in the form of um, speech generating devices, which are on the iPad. And AWAS is an example of one such AAC software. So let's see what happens. Uh, there are a lot of myths that parents and uh, people generally face with uh, regard to AAC and implementing and using AAC with the child. So what are some of these myths? One is that AAC should be introduced only after giving up all hopes of natural speech. Um, so this would actually increase the risk of uh, worsening behavior problems and leading to more emotional issues and social issues of the child being deprived of communication and waiting in the hope of his developing natural speech. Uh, the next one is that um, introducing AAC reduces the motivation to speak. Well, this is, it is in fact quite the reverse because AAC actually facilitates development of natural speech. And we do have several cases where children with hearing impairment have improved and have, has resulted in development of speech. The next is that uh, do we give importance to speech or communication? So obviously it is uh, speech, while it is important, it, the more important one is actually to communicate so that the child is able to express himself to family and friends and which reduces his um, frustration in inability to communicate. It is not so important that he speaks, but it's more important than he, that he communicates what is going on in his mind. And sometimes parents think that the child is too young and not yet ready for AAC. Well. Uh, uh, in the Western world, there are children who start off with AAC as young as two years old, which is when um, uh, they start expressing themselves and the need to communicate grows after that. In fact, it starts at six months onwards, but we can start at two and a half, uh, uh, two years plus, which is a good time to start for um, early intervention. So there are uh, some some people who feel that the child is um, the, the cognitive needs are too much, uh, the cognitive deficits are too high. Uh, well, that is not the case. Children with even severe cognitive deficiencies are capable uh, of learning and benefiting from AAC. So you go with an assumed competence that the child is capable of uh, communicating and without any prejudice. So the child has, every child has a right to communicate. And we do have a lot of uh, success. There are uh, AAC users even in India. We have Bhavna Rao who is a typical example. She had finished her class 12 with 90% marks. Uh, she couldn't, she doesn't know, she can't uh, eat or speak or walk or talk. 
but yet she was able to complete her graduation and she has now become an entrepreneur and all of this was possible because of her ability to communicate and this she was able to do actually in fact with her eyes alone uh, by reading every single word and uh, every single alphabet every single word on a picture chart which was uh, basically her AAC tool. So this is, uh, I would like to take you through the AVA story. So we started in 2007, I'll give you a brief history about it, uh, which was about seven years ago. Uh, it actually was an outcome of a conference between IIT Madras and Vidya Sagar and where um, we were asked uh, to develop a solution for children with cerebral palsy. So it actually started off as a device for children with CP and it is over the years we had worked with actually almost 500 children and about 25 speech therapists from India and uh, the US and even Denmark and over the years this has evolved into what it is today which is basically an app, an AAC app for children with uh, speech disabilities. So along the way we had uh, we had released the first version of AWAS in 2009. We had uh, uh, received a national award for empowerment of people with disabilities from the president of our country in 2010. And uh, in 2012, we were featured in MIT's technology journal. Uh, this was Ajit Narayan who was the inventor of AWAS. He featured as uh, one of the youngest innovators, uh, one of the top 35 innovators in the world. And uh, we, all, we also featured in a TED talk. I was the subject of a TED talk in 2013 and in 2014 we had released uh, the light version and we have also released it in several languages which is uh, other languages other than English. So we have an Australian version, we have a Denmark, Danish version, Italian version and now French and Spanish. So we have been uh, growing across multiple cultures. Uh, where it is available in multiple languages. However, in India, it is available in um, six Indian languages, which is apart from English, it is available in Hindi, Marathi, Tamil, Telugu, Malayalam and Kannada. And um, so these are the kind of uh, prototypes that it was there earlier. It was there as a device, as you can see in 2010. 2011, it came out in Android and uh, 2012 and 13, so it gradually evolved over a period of time. And some of the schools we partnered with was Vidya Sagar, Spastic Society of Tamil Nadu, Indian Institute of Cerebral Palsy in Calcutta uh, and several of these others, Adarsh, etc. And the usage of AWAS has been across uh, the country where several schools have adopted it all over India. And this is of course an earlier um, depiction and right now it is far more than this. So here we are. Uh, right now it is being used even in the US. Uh, some of our main customers are in the US and it is benefiting thousands of children across and we are getting constant inquiries from all over the world asking us to create AWAS in their language. So uh, what is special about AWAS is that it is the only AAC software in Indian languages and it comes with an Indian voice. Uh, we, have, we have tailored the vocabulary and customized it for making it relevant to the Indian culture which means you have items like food and, and I'll be showing you that very shortly. Uh, food, festivals, currency, etc. are all depicting Indian pictures and of course you have support from India on Indian time and you have several schools that have adopted AWAS here. And of course we have a user group which can be more closely associated. And of course it is a research based and it is award winning. So what does AWAS basically have? It has two modes. One is a picture mode and one is a keyboard mode. And I will be taking you through each of these. Yeah, you must be able to see the screen now. Uh, so this is the main uh, picture mode of AWAS where we have these different folders which actually show you um, and the various uh, languages in which it is available. So, uh, so let me take you through the picture mode. I hope you're able to see it. If you have any problems, please let me know through the chat. There's a chat window there that you can send me a message on. 
so you'll be able to see the picture more so the the green buttons are actually the folders so if you can see there is a quick there is a yes no getting started so the first five are actually the english ones and then the next ones are the different languages that you see so i'll take you through the english version first so there is the um, quick which shows you yes no please make me a, a schedule so these are all different words that are used in the quick this is for quick communication that the child can use uh, yes no is for very basic communicators who just want to say yes and no uh, then there is getting started basic and advanced these are the three levels of vocabulary they are graded the gra getting started has just about 50 words the basic has about 200 words and the advanced has something like uh, five, four to 5,000 words. So if you see getting started and the vocabulary is basically organized uh, based on brown stages of language development. So we've made sure that there is a language development which happens as you, as the child grows across the categories, uh, across the levels, sorry. And um, so in the first level, which is getting started, he's able to say, single word or two word left or two word phrases so he can say something like um, he can say want or he can just say more and then uh, say more biscuit biscuit more biscuit biscuit so you notice that when you tap on any of the words, there is an audio reinforcement and there is a visual reinforcement. So, and the image zooms in. So it's a multi-level sensory reinforcement that the child gets and which is very crucial and uh, important for children with autism. It helps them learn quicker and is more motivated as well. So when you tap the sentence box, he is able to say, uh, speak it out loud. More biscuit. You will notice that it's also an um, Indian voice with an Indian accent. Now when you go back, uh, that is getting started. You are able to say two word sentences. When uh, you come to this, you can say little longer sentences. You can say want. Want. Or you can say I want. I want. And then you can say ball. Ball. I want ball. So this can be a slightly longer sentence. And now when you're going to advance, you can have an even longer sentence. So I can say something like I. I want. Want. So let me turn off the enlargement so that it makes it easier for the demo. There is a setting called zoom on select and I set it to no zoom. So I can say I want to eat two. so it doesn't zoom in anymore I go into the food folder as you can see I want I can say I want to drink hot milk so I can say I want to drink and then um, more no. and go down to drinks and say more milk milk I want to drink more milk so this is an even longer sentence and you can see how you just uh, move from one category into the next and you're able to easily form the sentence that you want. And if you notice in, in every folder that you have, uh, there are some things called the core words which are present everywhere. So ours is a very core word based approach that we followed which is also based on uh, the brown stages of language development which enables children to use uh, so typical children uh, develop vocabulary by listening to core words and core words are the words that are most commonly used and it constitutes about 95% of the words that we use in our day-to-day uh, -day communication. So these are words like want, to, do, uh, more, some, etc. So if you see in every page, in every page of ours, we have a bunch of core words and these color coded, uh, these words are color coded by Fitzgerald color, uh, color code, which means uh, yellow is for pronouns and people, green is for actions, brown is for prepositions, blue is for adjectives, 
grace for questions and time. So all this follows a particular code which helps the child uh, remember and recall uh, what word he uses and what word to choose. So it makes his learning much quicker. So in every page, so when you go into the main page, you have a bunch of code words which are common. Uh, and then when you go into the eat folder or the food folder, you have a bunch of words related to food and these are all the core words related to food. So that it makes it easy for you to form sentences and you don't have to have too much of back and forth to find the words you want. So now you have a bunch of uh, words and if you look at uh, breakfast, you have words which are uh, relevant to the Indian culture. You do have parathas, paratha, uh, puris, Puri. And then you have dosa, dosa, idli, etc. So you do have a bunch of uh, words which are idlis and chutney and upma and pongal. So all of these are there. So and you can add your own words and I'll show you how you can do that. So let's say we want to add new words. So you go into edit which is the thing on top. And let's say I want to add a new folder. So let me add a new category. There is an add new. So I can add something called crafts. Okay. I tap next. And it shows me a bunch of uh, images automatically that come up, which is related to craft. So as you can see, I can choose any of these. And if this is appropriate, I can take this and I can say done. Okay, so it now has created a craft folder. So I can go into the craft folder and create a bunch of words. So I can say edit, add new and I say many items together. So let's say I add a few words related to craft. Let's say I say scissors, tape, cut, blue or maybe red, blue, green, yellow, etc. So I just add a bunch of words and I say done. And you can see that as soon as I tap it, it gives me color coded words which are very quickly added onto the folder. And they are also color coded in terms of nouns being orange, uh, uh, this thing being cut, uh, action being green and the rest being uh, blue which is adjective. So it's very easy to move it around. Um, I can even move these if I want yellow ahead or I just have to hold it down and it's very easy for me to move the words around. So you notice that uh, it's very easy for me to add these words and I can come out of the edit mode. Um, I can also, uh, in the edit mode, I can also do, I can also select multiple and let's say um, two of them, red and blue, are not something that the child is familiar with. I can do a hide so that when I come out of the edit mode, it is hidden from the child's view. And I can always go back and then select it and then say show and then it comes back into his view. Now I can also do a multiple um, block edit so I can if I don't want it at all, I can do a delete. Uh, select a bunch of them and do delete. I'm not doing that, but I'm just showing you how that can be done. I can also do a copy. Uh, so there is a block copy and I can go to an earlier level and then say paste. So you'll notice how it is pasted here. Right, so I can now select them and say delete so that... So, so this is the craft folder that we created. I can of course change the color code of any of them. Okay, now if I want to um, search for specific words, I can, let's say I want to look for the fruits folder and I want to add something there, I can look for fruits. And when I search for it, there is a, there is a search icon here which is on top, which makes it very easy for me to locate words in the vocabulary without having to browse through every single folder to see where it is. So I can search for a word at, uh, 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 and randomly access it. And uh, so you'll notice that it gives me these results and these are the three folders and the rest are words. 
So if you notice the one with the folder icon, it means that their folder is called fruit. And this is the fruit in the basic folder and this is the fruits in the advanced folder. So when I tap it, it takes me directly to that folder. So here you are with the folder that is the advanced fruits folder. You will also notice that there is this breadcrumbs as we call it, which indicates the present um, so this is so when I when I go into any folder, it takes me into the it shows it displays the breadcrumbs for that particular folder where we are. So you must be noticing it on top. And I can even tap the breadcrumbs to change. I can tap any of these to change the folder and navigate to that folder. So it, it makes it makes it easy for me to quickly navigate even two levels up. So, uh, so the navigation becomes pretty simple. Now you notice that on the right hand side are the navigation buttons. So the go back is for going back. The home button is, uh, this is the home button which takes you to the home. The quick gives me quick access to the quick folder and it's a one tap access to that folder. I don't have to go into uh, multiple folders to, to see that. Uh, there is I made a mistake. That is the mistake button which is here and that is for the child to be able to say that he's made a mistake with an incorrect selection. The last one, the bottom most is the alert button. So this is something that is useful to the child to call for attention so to the parent or to the teacher and uh, uh, it is just something to to say something like I want to say something. So the child can always use it for expressing himself. Now, um, so this is basically about the picture mode. And um, you have a help button on the top right hand corner. If you notice it here, it's a little question mark icon. Now when you tap that, it shows you, you can either chat with us or you can say explain the screen. And when you tap explain the screen, it shows you the help for this particular screen which means every single button on this page is explained in a very simple and uh, straightforward manner. So it tells you what exactly uh, each button stands for. And this option of help is available on every single screen. And uh, so if you would never be lost, you can always tap the help button to figure out what to do next and what, what some of the buttons stand for if you're, if you're not sure. So, um, now what we can do is um, I can I, I take you through some of the settings that are relevant to this. So you tap the settings button and I'll start with the with the settings related to picture settings. So you have an option of either removing the message box. So this is useful for children who are just getting started with AAC and uh, they might find the message box a bit distracting in which case you can remove it. Uh, then the pictures and message box is there currently by default but uh, as the child gets used to it and learns the pictures and is graduating to text you can choose to remove it. So everywhere where we've provided a visual prompt we make sure that there is a method by which you can fade it away so that the child doesn't become entirely dependent on it. So each of these is something that you can fade. Now pictures per screen is something that's useful and you can start with as low as one picture per screen two pictures I hope you're able to see that. Three. Uh, and then four. Eight. Fifteen. Twenty-four. So as you tap it, it can keep changing. Uh, it may not reflect as quickly in yours, but uh, it, it, it uh, changes immediately on tap. So this is the way it can change and let me set it back at 15 which is the default. And uh, the next one is the caption size. So this is again very useful because uh, um, you can start with no caption which means only the image and gradually move the child from small text uh, to medium so that uh, the small is of course for you to see. 
you can move, you can reduce the uh, size of the image and increase the size of the text in a very gradual manner so that it uh, eases the transition from pictures to text. And then you can reduce, so this reduces further the size of the image and increases the size of the text until you move to only text. So this ensures a smooth transition from pictures to text and the child is able to read uh, sight word reading. And this makes it easy for them to transition to the keyboard mode. Uh, then you have, uh, so for children with, uh, so this is the default mode where it is without any um, contrast and the contrast is always useful for children with uh, visual challenges. And uh, the color code is again something that we give an option to fade it away because um, as I said earlier, anything with a visual prompt, we make sure that there is a method by which you can fade away the prompt. So you can choose to color code it. So by default, it is color coding the background. You can then color code stripes so that it just appears, the color appears as a single stripe on the top. And uh, it is just a little uh, cute for the child. And then you can choose to not color code completely, so you remove the color code altogether. So that is a way by which you can uh, reduce the prompting of the color code. Um, and then the zoom on select again is something you can turn off. You can also have it zoom at slow, medium and fast speeds. So there is a speed setting that you can you can do. Um, now starting screen is something that you can choose. So you can set it to different languages. So let me set it to Hindi. Uh, so you can choose any of them. And uh, so in Hindi, I'll give you an example. So let me say pain. And I'll choose phase and so that is what it says. It is a recorded voice. Uh, so every sentence has been recorded. Every um, word has been recorded here. So this is the way that every single... Uh, so if you look at uh, food... So these are the different ones and these are all again, uh, a lot of them are relevant to the Indian culture. So this is the kind of uh, vocabulary we have in Hindi and the same is there available for all the other languages as well. Now the vocabulary, um, the depth of vocabulary is more in English because um, simply because there is text to speech conversion that is there. So we do tend to upgrade it whereas for the Indian languages it is um, it is based on the audio recording. So there is a fixed set of sentences that are there. Of course, you can always add to it. And uh, let me show you how you can do that. So when you add a new message, and let's say I have, um, I say, um, Let's say I say apple and there is an image. Now I can, if I, I can always record this. I can say save and I can play it back. Save. Yeah. So you can see that there is a little recording button at the bottom. Um, so what this does is you can, uh, if, you're, if you don't want English audio and you want Hindi audio, you can always record it here and play it back to see how it sounds. And if you record it in a, in a soundproof room without any other sound, it comes very, um, it, it's of high quality. Now you can also add photographs and this is the way you can add, take your own. I can say take photo and I can take the photo using the iPad or I can choose a photo from the gallery and I can even change this color code. Uh, right now it has taken it by default but if I ha want to have my own color code I can change it the way I want to. Okay, And uh, you will also notice that it shows when I choose Apple, um, of course in other languages the text will always be in English and it's only the audio that comes out in different languages. Um, so. 
This is how I can record and change and create my own vocabulary with so I can change the audio, the image and the text and the position. Yeah. So this way I can have my own vocabulary, I can start afresh and I can create uh, anything that I want to. Okay. So So I can have the starting screen set up to be any of them. Um, I also have page up and page down keys, which means um, if I have words which are, let me get back to the starting screen as root screen. So the starting screen basically sets it up so that every time I hit the home button, it will take me within that screen. So I can restrict the child from going into something like this screen because it has far more folders and create a folder just for him and set that as his starting screen so that he has restricted view only to the vocabulary within that. So even if he hits home, he would only be contained within that one set of vocabulary. Um, so when I come here, I can do, I have set up the page up and page on keys and when I come into advanced, you will notice that instead of scrolling, this actually locks the scroll and I will not be able to scroll with the screen and instead I can scroll it only if I tap the page up and page down keys. So this is useful for children who have difficulties with fine motor control so that there is no accidental scroll of the screen um, by mistake. So this is a useful setting for them. Um, and then we have the, the quick and the core words button. So you, uh, that is the quick button here that you can see. This is the default. However, if the child is at a more advanced level, uh, we have the core word folder as I had shown you earlier. So this has a bunch of these core words which are the most commonly used words as I had said. So this is again research based. It's a set of words that are used. 96% uh, of the words are core words. So this is that set of words and these are accessible with a single click from any page that you are on. So the quick can be configured to be the core words folder as well. So this is when it would be uh, the quick and the core words button can be toggled. Um, you will notice that there is a grammar option and uh, so this is turned on. So when I see something like when I tap you. You, you would notice that you, yourself, your, yours, uh, they all come up and I can choose any of them. So if I say that, it says that and those. So I can change it depending on what I want. So different variations of the word, the different grammatical uh, variations are possible to be changed and make the communication more accurate. Now if you also look um, if I look at eat, eat, okay, you see different forms of eat, which is ate, eaten, eat, eats, eating, and will eat. So it shows you past, present, and future, and singular and plural forms of it, and uh, first and second, first, second, and third person. So it shows all the forms, and I can choose it accurately. Now, if I also want to say something like, um, so even for verbs, it is present, and if I look at um, adjectives. Similarly, I can look at uh, clean and you will notice that there are clean, cleaner, cleanest which comes up. So there are simple comparative and superlative forms of the adjective that comes up. So as you can see there are all these variations whether it's a verb or noun or and uh, nouns also you can see it as uh, singular and plural. So each of these have different variations that come up. So if I look at uh, sandwich, it says sandwich, sandwiches. So you do have a singular plural version that comes up. So this is the morphology part of it. And um, of course the voice you have seen, I can also change the speed at which the voice is spoken and what to speak. So what to speak is, uh, by default it speaks everything, uh, which means every tap of the word is spoken. 
but uh, if you set it as words then it doesn't speak when i when i navigate through a category it doesn't speak the category name because it can be kind of misleading for the child so i can speak only words which means only the final word that i tap that i want to be on the message box is actually spoken and uh, i have another option by which i can say speak only message box which means only after i have formed the complete sentence is it spoken so once the child is familiar with the different words that are available um i can speak only message box especially if the child is in an inclusive setup in a classroom where um you don't want every child to be disturbed by a single but by one or each child tapping these different options and only when the child wants to speak he would press do you those eat clean sandwich <coughs> so it would tap it would speak only when you tap the message box to speak otherwise the rest of the words as you form it are not spoken <coughs> So this is how you can uh set up the various settings and options in the keyboard or in the picture mode. Now let me take you to the keyboard mode. Now let's say I want to form a sentence. Now uh, I let's say the child wants to say something like I want to go to um so I want, I want uh to So and then he he can he can toggle into the picture mode and then say go, go. to to and he can say let's say he wants to say something like California so he can he can start typing and you will notice that as I type in the keyboard mode it prompts me with a set of words so there is prediction that happens based on what I type California and I can easily select from any of these words. Now if I say I want to go to school I can so this is the keyboard mode which is a very I, simple layout I can start typing it by say I I when I say W A it prompts me for want when I say I want it says I want to and then I want to go and then to so you'll notice that even the next word next word starts getting predicted when I say I want to go to it prompts me for school college work bed all of these which are all school pretty relevant So I want to go to school comes up very easily without me having to type too many alphabets. I want to go to school. So this is how I can form a very simple sentence. Now if there are sentences that I want to use repeatedly, I can do a save as you can see in the bottom there is something called save. I can tap the save key and uh, you will notice that there are three keys that are already highlighted. It means that they have messages stored in them. Now the rest of the messages which are not highlighted are available for me to store these simple sentences in it for me to be able to retrieve it later so let's say i can save it in s it gives me a message saying it's saved so which means it is saved now and if i delete this message by double tapping the message box i can always load it back when i say load it shows me the highlighted words the alphabets which are containing some messages so if i tap s the entire sentence comes back so this way i can have pre stored sentences that the child might want to use more often uh, and stored in the various alphabets and numbers 1 to 0 and a to z uh, now also you notice that there are a bunch of these um messages which are on top yes no thank you how are you sorry please help me these are basically quick keys and they are useful for just speaking it out thank you So if I tap it, it doesn't go onto the message box, but it just gives a quick response. How are you? So this is uh, useful when the child is in the middle of composing a sentence, and you quickly want to ask him something, and he wants to respond to you without having to disrupt what is there on his message box. So if you say, okay, do you want to go home, or do you want to do you want some water? Then he can just quickly tap yes, yes, and continue with his message. So this way it is just useful to have a bunch of these words and all these words and messages are also something that you can change and they are customizable so you can uh, change it the same way that you have saved in the letter s you can save it in any of these as well so it's the same way um so you have six additional spaces so you can make those very customized for the child um so if the child is used to certain things then you can always store them in those locations if he wants to use certain words or sentences now you have an undo which uh, brings back whatever was uh, the the last it undoes the last action on the message box 
you have the same alert and um, so this is um, you have also a shift so this now puts it in alpha uh, uppercase so for children who are more familiar with the uppercase letters that's useful and now when i the other thing is when i say load i can also see the past few sentences and history that i have loaded that i have saved uh, that i have spoken and of course i can delete all of them to erase the history so this shows me the history and the recently spoken sentences which becomes useful to reuse Um, also, there is a recent feature we have introduced, and uh, that is so. If I have something like, uh, if I want, if the child is a poor speller and is trying to spell phone by saying f o n e, then there is a phonetic spell check that is done where you can see the word phone also being prompted along with other f words. So you, so the right word can be. Uh, got by prediction so it's called a uh, it, it's a phonetic spell check that we've introduced this is a recent uh, addition to our feature set also if you say something like elephant e l e f okay it it still gives you elephant e l e p h a n t um, taking into account that there can be a phonetic spell or spelling mistake so these are some of the new features we've introduced um Now also we have, uh, so let me go take you into the keyboard settings. So if I go into settings, you can go into keyboard settings and there is the QWERTY and the ABC layout. So I can change it to ABC where some children might be more familiar with the ABC layout. So you can always use that. Um, and then in prediction, we have these, um, we have this option by which you can either turn off the prediction. So if the child is, doesn't need it and doesn't need that the queue you can turn it off and even the prediction with pictures you can so the, the unique thing about ours is that we have prediction with pictures which is not available in most of the other apps that are there in the market so uh, we give you prediction with pictures because typically it's not easy for the child to transition from pictures to text uh, very abruptly so there is that hand holding process by which the, the pictures are still there until you decide to uh, remove the pictures uh, now the, you can also turn off the next word prediction if the child doesn't want it and you can even turn off the current word prediction. You can turn off the phonetic match and the more interesting one is that you can introduce a delay in prediction so that you're giving the child a chance to actually try and form the word of his own. So for example, I can say I want to set delay and I can, I can actually set it to something like a 5 second delay. Okay, so I can basically set up the delay in seconds to say five seconds, and what it does is it waits for five seconds before it predicts it for you. So if the child is not able to get it, then it starts the prediction. So that is the prediction delay. Um, so yeah. So now let me take you through some of the more general settings that are there and which are uh, interesting and important. One is the main one is the, is the backup and restore. So you once you have made changes to um, the picture mode, you can always do a backup of the entire thing. So what it does is you can actually back it up. So which means it backs up the entire dictionary. Uh, it includes the settings for hours, the saved messages, the history, <coughs> the quick access messages which are saved on the top. And uh, so you can do that by saying backup and you say create a new backup <clears throat> so you, it says backup on fifth so it gives you the date <clears throat> and you notice it comes immediately <clears throat> as a backup on fifth, fifth February you can of course change the name of the backup <clears throat> sorry and uh, the next thing you can do is link to Dropbox and this gives you an option to actually store it in the cloud so this links you to Dropbox and uh, if you have a Dropbox account, you can log into that and so I can say allow. So let me do a 
So when I say allow, it then actually logs me into Dropbox and connects me to it. <coughs> so then it shows me that it's linked to Dropbox. So it links to so that that's the one that comes on. I'm sorry. So so then it, when it links to Dropbox, it creates the backup goes on to the cloud and it gets saved in your Dropbox account and when you want to synchronize it with another iPad so let's say the child is using one in the school and one at home or you have two at home that you want to synchronize so that the child has access to both then you can take a backup and restore it back onto the second iPad however it is still a good practice to take a backup and store it on the cloud in Dropbox so that in the event of any um, damage to the iPad or it getting lost or stolen or broken or anything you still have a you still have a backup of the changed content in the cloud and uh, you don't need to back it up on a regular basis it's only if you change the content dramatically you need to do it uh, but otherwise it's always you can always restore default vocabulary which brings back the original vocabulary so this is the link to Dropbox then we have another one which is called the track session here you enter the child's name so let's say the child's name is Rahul so you enter the child's name and you enter what is the description of uh, what he's learning today, description of the session. So let's say he's going to learn, focus on, um, let's say, core words for today. So you just enter the name of that and then say, OK. If the session starting, session tracking is on. So you notice that on the top left hand corner, it says tracking is on, which means every action that you do, every button that you tap is getting recorded. So when I say I like, like, and then I go into play and then say, <laughs> ball. So it records each of us and then let's say I go into keyboard mode and then say and. and. I like ball and bat. Now I can come back here bat. and you'll notice that I can choose bat. bat. So I can form a bunch of these words um, and as I use each of these, let's say I say home and quick. So now I can go back and if I tap on tracking is on, it shows me that I can stop tracking. So when I stop tracking, it will show me a list it is the the data log that it has created you will notice that it says uh, session description and then it gives me the bunch of uh, of uh, buttons that i have tapped it says advanced i like play toys then selected predicted word and then in the keyboard mode selected letter b selected letter a selected letter t and then spoke the message i like ball and bat and and then it says I switched from keyboard to pictures and then I tap delete and then select it back and then home and then quick. Now at the end of this I can also record my own notes. I can say today Rahul was a bit distracted, um, was distracted, maybe he, maybe whatever. I can give my own reasons and then so I can either save it or I can email it. Uh, either to the parent or, or to myself if I'm the teacher. So I can basically save it and uh, it will send it as a log. So this is the tracking session and that's a very useful part of it. And um, we also have something called a settings wizard which is very useful for parents. And this is something that comes up actually automatically when the session is, uh, when hours are started. And, uh, the first time that it's set up. So you can always go through it when you set up hours at home. 
what this does is it helps you uh, set up avas for uh, a first time user so you can it'll actually start by saying what is that name child's name so you can say rahul age maybe 10 years old or 7 years old is a boy and then i can choose what is the voice i want and then uh, it asks me a, a few simple questions is he new to symbols or does he use symbols uh, so every time i tap any of them it gives me recommended settings on the right you'll notice so it says what so this way when you tap each of these you'll get to know what are the kind of settings that are available and what are the different options under each settings for example if i say form simple sentences it says set medium text size so set text size to medium and uh, it helps you move from pictures to sight word reading and then it says you can develop grammar by setting grammar on and then it says use core words button for quick access to language building words so it gives you a bunch of recommended settings whenever you use this so you can go through this and see how what are the what are the recommended settings it also asks you for does he need a high contrast display does he uh, does he read does he need audio to be read slowly to him so depending on each of these needs so based on the child's cognitive and physical and sensory needs you can set up um, so does he have good fine motor skills or not does he have difficulty in scrolling and dragging so depending on these it, it recommends uh, settings for you so that you get a quick grasp of what are the various kinds of settings available now the other interesting one is also does he share messages with family and social media uh, we do have options by which you can share messages on facebook twitter and email um, and of course if he participates in classrooms you can turn the audio off for every word selection and select it and have audio only for the end of the message box so these are the basic ones and you can always apply changes or uh, go back so you can always say skip i will do this myself so yeah that's how you get into it now the share on social media as i told you you can have it on email let's say the child is able to send emails when i tap when i select that and i tap this to speak you will I'm notice all and that you will notice that there's a little icon that comes up on the message box when i tap it to speak and uh, when i uh, when i tap that it this is the mail that it forms and it sends it with the images which is something unique uh, and so the child is able to send messages on email similarly he can also send messages on uh, facebook so let's say he is on facebook and he wants to use it you can send happy birthday messages or something to his parents or anything like that so these are some of the basic um, options available and as i mentioned let me just see if there's anything else uh, settings yeah i think i've covered most of them there is of course a change settings password which is uh, helps you to um, set a password to prevent access to prevent the child from accessing it so you can have a password protected settings and edit option so so that there is no accidental access by the child and at the bottom most you will see what is the version of avas that you're running it says you're running version avas 3.2.1 so yeah i think um, so that is about uh all of our this functionality and uh, i guess that brings me to the end of the avas discussion and um, so thank you for attending this and i will take the question next